Life is a mystery to us all. It's a journey into the unknown, one that we can't seem to understand no matter how hard we try. As kids, we are foolish to believe that life is just perfect. Our naive way of thinking is just wait for us not to get hurt. But soon, reality sets in and we understand just how hard life can be on a person. And with this harsh reality, we learn that we can't run from any of it. We live day by day, having to face every little thing life throws at us, when half of it isn't even fair and almost none of it we asked for. The perfect example of this would be Goodnight Boom Boom. If you haven't read it, I advise you go read it because it's the perfect example of the journey into life. Boom Boom takes a different approach to the slice of life genre. Most slice of life cap off at the end of high school, but Boom Boom goes the distance, taking his time to develop the character that is Boom Boom from start to finish. And what I like to call this is an example of a coming of age story. Not necessarily a slice of life, but that's just how I just decide to label it. Poon Poon's character is shown to us as the reader, as a sort of bird figure, but what I interpreted Poon Poon's image as was that of a flightless bird. Because no matter how hard Poon Poon tried to run or fly away, he just couldn't. And he always had to try and deal with everything that was in front of him. With each stage of his life, Poon Poon is drawn in a different way, and each way gives us a glimpse of his mental state. Now, full disclaimer, there are going to be spoilers ahead, so again, if you have not read Goodnight Poon Poon, I suggest you stop right here and go read Poon Poon before moving on. At the start of Poon Poon, we see our main character, Poon 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 Yami, and he is drawn as cute little wingless bird he has dreams questions and interactions with friends and he's a normal little kid he takes in everything around him and talks to god to get the perfect advice life was just simple and easy his innocence led him to go into any situation unfazed because everything will work itself out the problem is the fantasy of a perfect world is just that fantasy nothing stays the same and poon poon gets a glimpse of that very quickly when his perfect family life is quickly shattered very early we are thrown into this world that's depicted in a different way we see poon poon as just a fragile little character his character is drawn very small and very simple to kind of bring about how simple being a child is and with that his environment is not that simple and it's drawn very detailed and we can see very uh you know different uh, emotions and feelings from the different from just background characters his teacher is very uh weird and i would like to interpret that as just how crazy being an adult is almost I know it's probably not necessarily something that the author had in mind, but that's just how I interpret it. And I think it does, I think it just goes in with, um, with, uh, Poon Poon in general, because again, he is drawn and we see him and even all his friends, they're just innocent little kids, not knowing any better, just going through life, thinking everything's all fine in the world, doing stupid stuff, like trying to watch porn and things like that. But his environment and the adults around him are drawn in a different manner and they act in a different way to the point where we're like, oh, why are they acting so weird? and Why are they acting so crazy? Because they have more complex emotions than the children do, because being an adult and living actual life is a lot more complex than just being a little kid. Poon Poon's life changes very, very quickly. The God he wants to talk to only criticizes him now and gives him the worst advice he's become a manifestation of poom poom's darkest thoughts and feelings he goes through a childhood trauma that ends up shaping the person he's going to be in life poom poom continues to grow and tries his best but the older he gets the more he loses and it seems like he can never win as poom poom goes through life the little flightless bird he is drawn as starts to change drastically as his own mental state changes he is drawn darker, more cynical as he goes through the different stages of life and as he transitions from middle school to high school. In middle school, Aiko was dating someone else. Aiko is one of Poon Poon's childhood friends and the person who he believed to be his one and true love. Basically his first love. 
Poom Poom realized he was still in love with her the minute he saw her with someone else. After the badminton tournament, Aiko asked Poom Poom to run away with her again. Aiko had originally asked Poom Poom to run away with her when they were still in elementary school, but Poom Poom failed to keep that promise because his mother was in the hospital. In the end, Poom Poom did not want to run away with her again. He felt that she should have been with her, uh, with the person that she was dating before. And then, we jump to his high school phase. Again, Poom Poom is changing. His form is a bit longer, and he's drawn a little more bolder, and there's times where she's shown in darker shades as well. And he actually has hair now, too. So, his figure is starting to change, and it's almost like it's starting to become a little more human. But, we still have, like, you know, obviously his little bird face and everything. Poom Poom is socializing more, and he's trying to fit in. He meets a girl, and they hit it off. But, we get to see a bit of Poom Poom's violent behavior and his more his hidden thoughts like his desires start to come out as he gets older he doesn't know how to channel any of this he doesn't know how to how how to control these desires because he's always been a closed off person from when he was young and always kind of put his emotions and his feelings and all these things inside of him he would put them to the side he wouldn't confront them. He wouldn't talk to people about them. He just put them to the side. And so now when those things come up as he's older, he doesn't know what they are and what to do with them. And eventually, because of this, the God who he's always talking to, again, he's a manifestation. He becomes a manifestation of Poom Poom's darkest thoughts and desires and, you know, gives him awful advice now. But we get to see an example of, of Poom Poom's desires kind of running out of his head because he tries to force himself onto her. And, you know, that's the first time that we've seen Poom Poom try to do something like that, even though he's had all these thoughts and everything. And, you know, you could kind of you get a glimpse into his mental state because of all the dialogue that we get with in, like inside of his head. But this is like, I, I think this is one of the first times that he actually does something like crazy like this. Besides the fact that he did end up quote unquote comforting Midori, which was his uncle's girlfriend at the time because his uncle had cheated on her. And again, his family is just completely not okay themselves. So you become a product of your environment, unfortunately. You know, and that's one of like the biggest things that happens to kids who come from broken homes or kids that, you know, face childhood traumas. You know, you become a product of your environment and you don't know how to cope with any of this stuff. And you end up in that same type of headspace as like the people who you saw do it as well. Now, after high school, I don't remember, I don't remember off the top of my head what part this was, but... It's after high school, a little after high school, and he turns into what seems like a triangle-ish pyramid type of shape. So, it's basically a tetrahedron, which is the simplest of polyhedrons. It, it was confirmed, and I did look into it, and you know, other people said the same thing, that the author did say that he wanted to make Poom Poom, like something like of the simplest of shapes and since a a tetrahedron is the simplest of polyhedrons it it made sense now a lot of people interpret this phase of poom poom's life in in different ways um the way i see it is poom poom closed himself off emotionally he didn't want people around him to know how he was feeling he suppressed all the horrible things He's gone through so much, he doesn't feel anything anymore. And this is Poom Poom's simplest form and is the most secure shape as he hides everything from people. It was always a way to reflect his simple, meaningless, unchanging existence that he was living. And that was that triangle phase. It didn't last that long. 
because I'm pretty sure after he started dating uh, Sachi and after they started working on the manga together that he changed back into like his regular like birdish form but during that period was when he was at his lowest point or not his lowest point because it gets worse as it goes on obviously but he was at such a point where he just closed off entirely and you know at that point he even said like he signed a lease for an apartment for two years and he was like if my life hasn't changed um about time these two years are up and when I have to go renew the lease then I'm just gonna kill myself and he's at a very bad point he didn't know why he was living he didn't you know he couldn't deal with the emotions and the things that he was feeling he felt like living was pointless and that his life was pointless and all and all these things and again it just ties back to everything from when he was a kid he didn't have anybody his family life crumbled in front of him when he was very young and he didn't have anybody to turn to yes he he would turn to his uncle and his uncle would offer advice but his uncle is also very unstable as well and isn't the best role model because of a lot of the stuff that he does because he acts on impulse and his dark desires and everything too and he's a perfect example of like yes like sometimes we can't help but act on those things because again like at the end of the day we're human but sometimes with desires and 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 feelings like that that are so like dark and not okay basically you have to learn to not do those things but poom poom didn't know so all he did was he kept suppressing and suppressing and suppressing and suppressing instead of trying to figure it out and try to find a way to to cope with it almost so a little later on, this happens roughly after, um, you know, I think the first time where him and Sachi's like the manga didn't get publicized or anything. And, you know, a little after he just he just kind of starts like closing himself off again. And we get to this point where he starts impersonating another person he impersonates Takashi who was his neighbor in the apartment that he lived in he did it because he hated the person that he had become and he just wanted to um he wanted to just be normal and liked by some by by everybody and he wanted to just be like seem like his life was just perfect and great and that he was you know succeeding in, in doing something in his life he wanted to impress Aiko, but in the end, you know, um, after they meet up and everything, they both end up revealing that they lied to each other. Um, Sachi's manga was published without Poom Poom's help. She revealed to Poom Poom that she was pregnant with her ex-husband's baby and asked Poom Poom for emotional support. Uh, Aiko talks about her modeling job and her boyfriend after they finally meet at a, at a driving school. Uh, Poom Poom talks about his university life and girlfriend, and Poom Poom is with the girl he met, but finally flips the switch due to all the stress building up inside of him. So, he met another girl at the driving school, and, you know, again, he was trying, he was acting like his, he was Takashi, so he was lying, and, you know, he said he went to university, yeah, he was, he, he played soccer, you know, and all this stuff, and then one night when they were together, the switch completely flipped and he realized that he just couldn't do it anymore and after meeting Aiko again his form changed again to uh, a long black head with four eyes and he realized he can't keep pretending to be someone he's not so again we see another uh, change in, in his character and we're getting to uh, a boiling point almost. So the next phase is what I like to call the four eye phase, uh, the four eyed phase. Uh, different pe- pe- different people call it different things. You know, that's just what I refer to it as. Our minds are filled with positive and negative emotions. One minute we can praise ourselves, the next minute we can be hard on ourselves. One can take over the other, but we have to find a balance between them. This new form is his darkest form where he gives in to his darkest and deepest desires. 
Boom Poon is depressed, depraved, abusive, and suicidal. He is drowning in his negative emotions. He can't control them anymore, so he lets them all out. And we see this when, you know, Poon Poon is forcing himself on the Aiko and, and trying to um, have sex with her and all these different things, and where he finally just gives in to Aiko. And Aiko decides to give in to him, finally. Um, they decided that they wanted to run away together. And Poon Poon decided that he finally was going to run away with her after years of not actually doing it and going through with it. But there was one thing that was in the way of that, and that was Aiko's mother. They decided to confront her and go tell her that they were going to be leaving together. Um... You know, obviously, Aiko's mother was very abusive towards Aiko from a young age. And this is just an, another example of tra- childhood traumas um, staying with us, um, abusive parents. Because, you know, Poon Poon had it differently than Aiko did. Aiko had a physical abusive home because her parents were like cultists. Um, Poon Poon more or less had more of, of, of an emotional, mental abusive relationship with you know his mother and his dad wasn't really bad but he really couldn't necessarily do anything because you know he kind of took the fault for uh, what happened with the mother and you know led Poon Poon to be like oh like he's an abusive dad blah 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 and you know obviously he ended up leaving but things go bad you know, when they tried to talk to uh, Aiko's mother, and Aiko's mother is very, very not, like, very upset, she's not happy, and she tries to attack Aiko with a knife, and this forces Poon Poon to make a decision, fight or, fight, or fight, uh, instincts went off, pulls Aiko away, and, you know, the mom literally almost stabbed him, it was so close, but then it, and this led, you know, Poon Poon to attack her, and things get violent, and Poon Poon kills her. He strangles her, and then, um, it is revealed later that Aiko actually stabbed her to finish her off, but, uh, they both get injured, and they try to, f- you know, fix their injuries, but, you know, they can't really do that much about it without going to a hospital, but they couldn't do that, uh, they go to the woods to bury the body. Poon Poon lets his emotions run freely. Trust is the only thing keeping them together. And you know, at this point, there's not really much love that is keeping these two together. But Poon Poon feels free almost because he's just letting all his dark emotions kind of run rampant now. The final phase is his dark devil phase, or that's what I like to call it. It's his final form, and it's a blacked out phase with devil words. And now we see that uh, as a result of Poon Poon letting his negative emotions run rampant, he's become like a devil. I mean, killed his, uh, killed Aiko's mother, you know. So, their relationship isn't fueled by love anymore. Poon Poon is at his lowest point. And there is even a scene where he tells Aiko to take his eye out. Kind of very disturbing. And Aiko kind of sort of does it almost, but doesn't completely take it out. In the end, he does. he's doing this for his own selfish reasons. He doesn't even love her anymore, but he does it to gain his own self back. He just killed someone, so he's trying to find something to make him feel better about himself, to make him feel less guilty, like, Ayako is, like, that one thing right now that's, like, oh, I did it for her, like, I I had to, if I didn't, like, she would have died or I would have died, and, you know, he needed a reason to make himself feel less guilty, to gain his own sanity back, because they're both not stable right now. One of the darkest scenes in this story in my opinion was when they both were at the beach and they were having a good time just forgetting about everything playing around and poom poom's form shortly changes back to you know 
uh, his regular form, his regular little bird form, pure white, everything. But he sees a rope on the floor and he picks it up. And when Aiko sees that, she asks, am I going to be killed here? Which Poom Poom responds, yes. What makes this scene very, very dark for me is Poom, was when Poom Poom talks or when he gets dialogue, it's always in a pitch black panel. So it makes it sort of disturbing in a way because his thoughts and his his dialogue gets his own little panel and it adds to, to that to that dark tone and just with the solid just yes we just get a glimpse at Poom Poom right now and after like when we see Poom Poom again because again like I said his form shortly changes back but then after we see him again through Ayako's you know vision he's back in like his like dark devil phase like his face is pitch black and like he uh has the, the devil horns and everything um after they get to this place uh they were you know they finally got to where they wanted to be and they were trying to find jobs and they were trying to you know finally settle down uh, they see the news, and the police had found her mother's body, and now they were on, the, they were searching for, uh, Ayako, because she was the only thing connected to what might have happened, and realizing this, they knew that, you know, there was only so much that they can do at that point, and Ayako eventually kills herself after she realized that she's just a burden on Poon Poon, doesn't want to burden him anymore, and, you know, if he... If she stays alive, then it's just gonna mark the end for Poom Poom. Um, after this, Poom Poom goes to the miso factory where he went with all his childhood friends. And he goes there, and as God told him to kill himself, he decided to kill God, and he stabbed himself in the eye. He later wakes up in a hospital bed after Sachi found him at the factory and tells him that she'll be here whenever he wants to talk. Sachi realizes, you know, her own mistakes and realizes that she messed up with Poon Poon and tries to just be there for him. That's why, you know, she went on that long journey to find him and then she found him and, you know, is deciding that she still wants to be there for him. Uh, the story ends with Poon Poon meeting with Harumi, one of his childhood friends, and he has finally changed back to his old little bird form. Those are all the forms that he takes and kind of explanation of why he takes those forms. We just see from start to finish that Poom Poom um, gradually changes in the worst way possible. And at the end, I really just firmly believe that it's because of the fact that he just didn't know how to like control any of his emotions or really didn't understand them because he never really had anybody to really open up to. And that's just because he just chose not to open up to somebody, no matter how many people tried to be there for him. And I think it really goes to show at the end of the story when he finally just decided to open up to people because he realized that he had friends. And, you know, Sachi still being there for him, even though she fucked up and she knows she did. And, you know, obviously Poon Poon knows that he messed up too. Just her still being there and, like, their friends still being there for him, I felt like was what ultimately led Poon Poon to finally just open up and how he ended up being able to revert back to his old self. And I'm pretty sure, you know, he still had to go to jail and everything. I'm sure that kind of also changed him as well. But, you know, one of the biggest things is, you know, how our ties to the past still follow us. And, you know, letting go is a very, very hard thing to do. And, you know, obviously this story very much so uh, shows us that because every character in this series is going through something and their past traumas are living with them still. And it's hard to let go of those traumas and it's hard to let go of the ties you had to the past. And uh, uh, an example that I'm going to use besides Poon Poon would be uh, Seki. He is another character that was that was uh, friends with um, Poom Poom when they were kids, and we get to see a lot of his life with um, his best friend uh, Shimizu. I think that's how you say his name. 
and you know he has a lot of traumas as well from his family because his family like his family seen as trash and everything and we get to see that a lot of stuff happened you know um regarding like the miso factory and you know his fear of fire and that's an example of just like you know a trauma that he's had since he was a kid he's, he's scared of fire and you know he can't get rid of that it's just something that's probably gonna stick with him forever unless he you know finally decides to just sit down and try to get over that fear but some there's some things you just can't get over and they live with you um but in regards to Poom Poom, you know, from the very beginning, he had an attachment to Ayako, and we can see Ayako felt the same way. Poom Poom's whole life was based off trying to find and see Ayako just one more time to the point he couldn't even have an actual relationship with somebody. Ayako was also the same way, which they both revealed to each other towards the end. This is one example of how Poom Poom couldn't cut ties with his past. Poom Poom let his, uh, his failures, um in life to find him and he always let them hang over him because he didn't know how to cope with his emotions from a young age Poom Poom was always very closed off and didn't really express himself enough and it is revealed by his uncle the reason he turned out that way was because of an accident that happened when he was younger where his friend got hit by a car letting go is an extremely hard thing to do sometimes the past can bind us and lead us back to that one event or one time in our lives that we hated the most, the one thing we want to forget more than anything. For Poom Poom, life kept beating him up over and over again, and at some point, he just didn't know how to take it, mainly because he never had anyone to help him. His family were horrible people, and his dad was painted in a certain way by their mother, and he ended up hating him without knowing the truth when his dad really cared for him. And it has shown throughout the story that his dad still cares and loves for him because at the end of the day that is his son and again that's another example of just how like how difficult letting go is and how the past can still hang over us but again um as i've said in you know a previous video regarding you know Vinland Saga and Thorfinn it's just how you take that it's how you take the past and how you decide to move forward from it and with it because the past is always the past is the past we can never change that but it's how you move forward in life that's going to define who you are and how your life's going to end up there's nothing you can do about the past it's over now and you know whether you had a very bad experience it's just how you kind of bounce back from that experience and it's how you move forward and sometimes you can't you feel like you can't move forward but you have to figure out a way that you can move forward and even if it takes a while you know as long as you're making that little bit of progress because again it's hard to move on and to keep going from you know any traumas that you may have had in your life but at some point you have to try to start walking if you can't walk crawl until you can walk so you can, you know, finally move on from that. But Poom Poom shows us that, you know, it is possible to finally start moving, even if it takes a long time. Because, you know, even though Poom Poom went through all this stuff and, you know, became the person he was, he was finally able to let go and finally able to kind of move forward, even though it was almost too late and he ended up going to jail and everything like that but you know he was able to get there so that's all that matters at the end of the day that he was able to finally just start walking and finally put everything with Ayako behind him even though it happened the worst way possible and you know Ayako ended up killing herself and everything but at least he was able to kind of you know put everything behind him Good night, Poom Poom shows us how things can change in the blink of an eye. In the next 30 minutes, you can get the worst news of your life. Tomorrow, something amazing can happen. Or maybe next week, you'll die. Nothing goes according to plan, and we are left with trying to pick up the pieces of our broken selves. Our childhood traumas find a way to come back and haunt us. Or maybe something else from our past comes back to bite us. Life's never as nice as one thinks, and it's not as perfect and easy as we thought when we were young. At the end of the day, we learn to keep moving forward. 
Now that is just my interpretation of the things and messages of Poon Poon. These are my interpretations. Um, they don't have to be yours, and you know you don't have to agree with them. But comment down below what you interpreted Poon Poon as and how you took it. I decided to you know do my own spin of Poon Poon because there has been a lot of other people who have just done you know talked about the traumas that revolve around the characters and revolve around Poon Poon and things like that. So I decided to do something a little bit different. Um, so yeah. Poom Poom was a very good read, and I very much enjoyed it, and if you haven't read it again, you know, read it. I don't know why you'd watch this video if you didn't read it, or how, or why you'd make it this far if you haven't read it, but uh, I've gone on long enough. This has turned out way longer than I thought it was going to be, but, you know, it's just it's a long video, but uh, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Or if you want to check out my other videos like this, click the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.